Hello, my name is Dr. Omide, and uh, we are going to discuss the anterior abdominal wall and the inguinal canal. The anterior abdominal wall and the inguinal canal. So, um, we need to understand the divisions and the landmarks on the anterior abdominal wall, the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall, the location, boundaries, contents, and applied anatomy of the inguinal canal. So, the abdomen, it's part of the trunk that's located between the thorax and the pelvis. It's part of the trunk located between the thorax and the pelvis. So what are the boundaries of the abdomen? Superiorly, you have the xiphoid process, which is the terminal portion of the sternum, then the lower border of the costal arc, 11th and 12th ribs, and on the posterior aspects, you have the uh, 12th thoracic vertebra. So those are the superior boundaries. Xiphoid process, as you go laterally from the xiphoid process, there's the lower costal arc, then the 11th to 12th ribs, and finally, posteriorly, the 12th thoracic vertebra. What are the boundaries of the abdomen inferiorly? So you have the superior border of the pubic symphysis, the pubic crest, pubic tubercle, the fold of the inguinal canal, anterior superior iliac spice, iliac crest, and the spinous processes of the fifth lumbar vertebra. So those form the boundaries of the abdomen inferiorly. Superior border of the pubic symphysis, the pubic crest, pubic tubercle so you're moving from the midline pubic symphysis to pubic crest pubic tubercle the fold of the inguinal canal laterally there's the anterior superior iliac spine before you get to the iliac crest as you go more posteriorly to the spinous processes of the fifth lumbar vertebra so at the inferior, inferior lateral margin of the abdominal wall that's where you find the inguinal canal it's located at the inferior lateral margin of the abdominal wall so these are the boundaries. We said the abdomen is found between thora the thorax and the, uh, pelv uh, the pubic area. So superiorly, the xiphoid process, the costal arc, 11th to 12th ribs, before you get to the um, 12th thoracic vertebra posteriorly. Then inferiorly, from the pubic symphysis, the pubic crest, pubic tubercle, inguinal um, fold, anterior superior iliac spine, the iliac crest up to the um, processes of the fifth lumbar vertebra. So what are the bony landmarks? So the xiphoid process superiorly is palpable, the costal margins are palpable, the anterior superior iliac spine is palpable, then you have the tubercles of the iliac crest and the pubic symphysis. So these are the bony landmarks that are palpable. Then we also have part of the surface anatomy of the abdomen, you have the umbilicus. Umbilicus, commonly referred to as the navel, it's usually at the L3, L4, uh, um, junction, the junction between L3 and L4 vertebra. So if we ask you what is the position of the umbilicus, it's on the anterior abdominal wall um, located at the junction between L3 and L4 vertebra. And this location varies considerably. Still on the surface anatomy, we have what you call linear alba. What is linear alba? It's a median fibrous line, median fibrous line that runs from the xiphoid process to the pubic symphysis. It's the median fibrous line running from the xiphoid process of the sternum to the pubic symphysis. Then we have the linear semilunaris. Linear semilunaris is a curved line and it runs from the ninth costal cartilage to the pubic tubercle. So the linear alba is in between the right and left rectus abdominis muscle at the midline, running from xiphoid process to the pubic symphysis, while linear semilunaris is lateral to the rectus abdominis muscle. So it is located paramedian. So it curved line from the ninth costal cartilage to the pubic tubercle, so it's paramedial. Then you have the subcutaneous inguinal ring, which is also has a surface landmark, one centimeter above and lateral to the pubic tubercle. So when you have your pubic tubercle, if you move one centimeter above it and slightly laterally to the pubic tubercle, that is the location of the, the superficial inguinal ring. Then the deep inguinal ring, which is called the abdominal inguinal ring, it lies one to two centimeters above the mid inguinal ligament. So you have your inguinal ligament from the anterior superior iliac spine to pubic tubercle. So the midpoint of the inguinal ligament, one to two centimeters above it, that's where you have your abdominal inguinal ring or the deep inguinal ring. So superficial inguinal ring is one centimeter superior lateral to the pubic tubercle, while the deep inguinal ring of the abdominal abdo ab 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 abdominal uh, abdominal inguinal ligament is one to two centimeters above the mid inguinal ligament. The position of the inguinal canal is indicated by a line that is joining the superficial inguinal ring to the deep inguinal ring. So 
you have your pubic your pubic tubercle there okay and you have your anterior superior iliac spine so your inguinal ligament runs from anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle so from the pubic tubercle if you move one centimeters above and to the lateral that's your superficial inguinal ring and mid inguinal points mid uh, inguinal ligament point yeah midpoint between anterior superior iliac spine and pubic tubercle so if you get to the mid point and you move one to two centimeters above it that is the location of the deep inguinal ring so in your inguinal canal runs from the deep inguinal ring to the superficial inguinal ring located one centimeter superior lateral to the pubic tubercle so the regions of the abdomen the abdomen is divided into four equal quadrants and clinically we divide the abdomen into nine regions and this nine uh, so the four quadrants are divided by a midline uh, line passing through the midline and through the umbilicus so a transverse line through the umbilicus and a vertical line through the midline from xiphoid process to the pubic symphysis it gives you the four quadrants of the anterior abdominal wall uh, or four quadrants of the abdomen from the anterior abdominal wall then clinically it's divided into nine lines so how do you get these nine regions you draw a trans pyloric plane through the pylorus of the stomach okay then you have a trans tubercular plane through the tubercles of the uh, iliac bone so through the iliac tubercles and then a mid a line vertical line running from mid clavicular to mid inguinal point mid clavicular to mid inguinal point so if you join that vertical line on both right and left side it gives you the vertical line then the transverse lines are the transpyloric plane and the transtubercular plane so your assignment is to find out at least uh, 10 structures that pass through the transpyloric plane so transpyloric plane is a landmark for what so you need to list the structures of the transpyloric plane so these are the four quadrants of the abdominal wall so arterial abdominal wall so you, if you line, draw a line from the xiphoid process to the pubic symphysis a vertical line and you draw a transverse line through the umbilicus it gives you four quadrants so you have the upper quadrants on the right and left and the lower quadrants on the right and the left side and through the um, transpyloric line and transtubercular line you have your two transverse lines and mid inguinal to mid mid clavicular to mid inguinal if you draw your vertical lines on the left and on the right so when you draw all these you have your nine regions you have right hypochondrial region epigastric region left hypochondrial right lumbar umbilical left lumbar right and left iliac and the hypogastric or super suprapubic region so you need to know at least five structures in each of the following regions like right hypochondriac region you can say you have the right lobe of the liver you have the gallbladder the right kidney right ureter and so on and so forth on the left you have the spleen the tail of the pancreas the left kidney left adrenal so those are the structures there if the gastric region you have some parts of the left lobe of the liver you have the head of pancreas you have the duodenum those are at the epigastric region right lumbar you have um, the kidneys there okay and the ureter so right and left kidneys and ureter then this side you have your ascending colon you have the descending colon umbilical region you have mainly the small bowel the iliac regions you mostly have the um, ovaries and the uterine um, tubes in most cases the appendix on the right you have your um, the rectum and then when you get to the suprapubic region you mainly have the bladder and the uterus so those are the structures you need to know the contents of each um, region so this is how you draw your transpyloric plane and you draw your transtubercular through the tubercles of the iliac uh, crest then you have mid inguinal mid clavicular to mid inguinal on both right and left so you have your hypochondriac regions lumbar regions the right iliac then epigastric umbilical and hypogastric regions so what are the layers of the anterior abdominal wall so the anterior abdominal wall has layers which are arranged from superficial to deep and you need to know the order so from superficial you have skin followed by fascia then muscle then deep fascia skin fascia so uh, muscle and uh, deep fascia so uh, 
the skin is thin skin. Then you go to fascia. The fascia has two parts. You have campus fascia, which is the fatty part of the superficial fascia. So it's the most superficial and it's fatty. Then deep to it, you have the fibrous fascia, which is called the scapus fascia. Then when you go to the muscle, we have three layers. The most superficial is the external oblique muscle, followed by internal oblique and transverse abdominis muscle. Then lastly, you have the deep fascia, which is called the fascia transversalis. So those are the layers of the anterior abdominal wall. The skin, fascia, divided into fatty campus fascia and fibrous campus fascia, which is deep. From there, you get to external oblique muscle, internal oblique, transverse abdominis muscle, and finally fascia transversalis. So that's the order of the structures on the anterior abdominal wall. So skin, campus fascia, scapus fascia, external oblique, internal oblique, um, transverse abdominis muscle before you get to your fascia transversalis. So from superficial to deep, you have your skin, superficial fascia, which is um, um, campus and scapus fascia. Campus is fatty, scapus is fibrous. Then the anterior lateral walls, external oblique, internal oblique, and transverse abdominis before you get to fascia transversalis. From the fascia transversalis, you find extra peritoneal fascia before you get to peritoneum that is housing the abdominal organs. So the layers are skin, campus fascia, scapus fascia, external oblique abdominis, internal oblique abdominis, um, um, transverse abdominis muscle, then fascia transversalis, extra peritoneal fascia before you get to the parietal peritoneum. So um, the skin of the abdominal wall Usually in abdominal uh, distension, for example, in pregnancy or other causes, the skin will have transverse white lines, which you call stria gravidarum in pregnancy or stria albicantis. So these are uh, white transverse lines in abdominal distension. We have what we call linear nigra. Linear nigra is a pigmented midline streak from the umbilicus to pubic symphysis that is commonly seen in pregnancy. Linear nigra is a pigmented a midline streak on the skin. It runs from the umbilicus to the pubic symphysis and commonly seen in pregnancy. So that's it about the skin of the abdominal wall. Then when you go to fascia, we say the most superficial fascia is the campus fascia. Now you need to know that this campus fascia is continuous with the superficial fascia in the thorax, back, perineum, and the thigh. It's continuous with the superficial fascia in the thorax, back, perineum, and the thigh. In the scrotum, this campus layer is represented by datus muscle, which is a thin layer of smooth muscle. In the scrotum, the campus fascia is represented by datus muscle, which is a thin, smooth muscle layer. The scapus fascia, which is membranous, fuses with the campus, with the fatty layer of the thorax, iliac crest, fascia lata, urogenital diaphragm, linear alba, and pubic symphysis. The scapus fascia fuses with the fatty layer of the thorax, the iliac crest, um, fuses with fascia lata on the thigh, fuses with the urogenital diaphragm, the linear alba, and pubic symphysis. It's also continuous, this scapus fascia is continuous with membranous layer of perineum, which you call coles fascia. Scapus fascia is continuous with the membranous layer of the perineum, called coles fascia, and it's continuous laterally with the thoracolumbar fascia of the back and inferiorly with fascia lata of the thigh. So it's continuous with thoracolumbar fascia and fascia lata. We have superficial vessels and nerves that are located between the scapus and the campus fascial layers. So you can be asked to write on the fascia of the anterior abdominal wall. So you have campus fascia that is continuous with the fascia of thorax, back, perineum, and thigh. And in the scrotum, it's replaced by smooth muscle called datus muscle. Campus fascia is the deep fibrous fascia that's continuous with the thorax, iliac crest, fascia lata, urogenital diaphragm, linear alba, and pubic symphysis. And it's continuous with coles fascia in the perineum, which is membranous fascia in the perineum, and also continuous with thoracolumbar fascia in the back and fascia lata in the thigh. We have superficial vessels and nerve located between the campus and the scapus fascia. So this just shows you the uh, fascial layers. So this is the fascia you can see it's continuous with um, in the perineum and in the thigh. So the deep invest. Uh, or investing fascia is thin, so we have the transversalis fascia in the inner surface and it passes behind rectus sheath to cross the median plane. So the peritoneum is internal to the fascia transversalis. So the deep fascia